Hi, in this video, we will talk about 3D graphics. After successfully completing 2D graphics, now it's time to make your application look even better than the previous ones. All right, like 3D graphics, almost a very new feature, which is introduced in WPF itself. Like in, in WinForms, we don't have anything related to 3D graphics. All right. So the WPF, which introduced this 3D graphics will provide you the functionality to draw, transform and animate the 3D graphics. So in this one, we will not talk about the animation part. We will just see how to draw the 3D figures here. But later in the next videos where we will discuss about the animation, we will try to put some animation features in those 3D objects. So let's start the practical for starting the 3D graphic things in WPF. So for implementing the 3D graphics, I have already written the code here so that it will be saving our time. Now let's see what it is all about. All right. So let's first see the design where you can see this particular window. Let me just increase the size here. All right. So here you can see there is a window uh, which is containing this 3D object. All right. You can feel because of the, all the shadings out here. You can feel that, okay, this is nothing but the 3D object. And right after that, I have placed the slider so that as soon as I'll start sliding this, it will start rotating. Depends on which particular axis and we have to specify whether I want to rotate it on X, Y or Z axis. So before running this program, let's see what all I have written in the XAML. So first of all, I will use viewport 3D, which this is the base thing whenever you want to put any 3D object in your window. So inside any grid or stack panel or something, you will have to add the viewport 3D on which you will render the 3D object. You can give any particular name to this. And after that, using the 3D camera, I have put the position for the incoming object. All right, there's a perspective camera with the name cam name main. And there I have placed the position. All right. So that will be the location where your object will be placed inside this viewport 3D. And after that, for giving some effect to this 3D object, what I have done, I have made some directional lights. All right. As here you can see, uh, you can see there is some difference in the light. All right. Like it's, it's getting like the light is coming from this side and it's getting shaded out there. If I will remove this particular area, you will not get the look and feel of the 3d object. Let me remove this. Now you can see it's completely black. All right. So, and there is no feel of 3d itself. So for that, I have added this model visual 3D in which I have made the directional lights. And here I have chosen the direction minus one, minus one, minus one means it will be coming from the left top position. All right. You can try changing the values in the different values. Like here I have placed minus one, minus one, minus one for all the uh, X, Y and Z axis. You can try changing the values out there to get the newer looks. And now finally, it's time to create the uh, our object. All right. And for that, as here uh, in 2D graphics, you have seen when while uh, while writing the polygon or polyline, I placed multiple points for X and Y axis. Similarly, here I'm doing the same things for the uh, triangle indices also like the three for our 3D object as well. So inside the uh, model view 3D content, you will put the geometry model because here I'm going to draw something. All right. And that's nothing but the 3D model of the geometry. All right. So after that, it's triangle indices. And here you can see I have started putting some positions. All right. And these positions will be taken from this camera because I have already put, I have already selected the area where I want to put my object in that visual 3D. So out there, I will just put all the indices which I want to cover. All right. So just because of these things, my this model is created. Now, once the model is created, you may want to make some color. All right. So for that, there is the 3D material and where I have used diffused material and I've chosen the color red for that. All right. 
here you can see it's some sheddings are coming of red uh, let me show you in the design it is red but just because I have added some effects on that 3d so that it will give the look of the 3d object which I have added right here directional lights all right so this red is not coming as a single color it's coming in some shades and finally there is a transformation is going on like transformation is what type the rotation because I have as I shown you that I have added the slider which will be helping us for making the rotation so here in the axis I have used one 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 that means it will rotate on the base of X Y and Z all the three axes so let's execute and see how this rotation is going on for now so here you can see all three axes are participating in this rotation but let me make some changes out there like if I want only X axis should participate then I will put 0 for the Y and Z axis and now the rotation will take place on the basis of X axis only similarly you can put one on Y one on Z for the different things and later what I have done I have put the slider where I have made the binding with the element called rotate all right so here is the rotate and what it will do it will take the uh, path sorry the angle property of the axis angle 3d rotation all right so when you will make the changes in the slider it will change the angle of the 3d object so this is just a simple implementation of the 3d object you can try means you can put some different values out there in the indices you can put some different directions for the light and you can change the color and you can change the rotation for making some new and fancy implementation for the 3d objects in WPF